What's up and welcome back to the Kinda Funny Games cast. Of course, I'm Tim Geddes and I'm joined by the new face of video games, Blessing at Ayoye Jr. Uh, Tim, I, had, I of course had to uh, swing by Wendy's to get the peach mango for the season. Mm-hmm. What season is mm-hmm. that? Where did you go? Wendy's. It's review season. Wendy's it's review season. Honey, oh, the, honey can you, the uh, great one, Tam. Honey, look, look, <laughs> look out at the crops, honey. The peaches and the mangoes are perfectly growing. It must be review season. I just imagine <laughs> that. <laughs> That's what they say. Isn't that right, Nitro Rifle Andy Cortez? It sure is. Shout out to the goddamn minor key change right there in the count in the kind of funny jingle. Beautiful. Carter Harrell killing Carter the game. I, we've been trying out these new custom review intros, and I just love that I can hit up Carter and just be like, yo, dude, we're thinking Horizon. And then like four hours later, he just boom, here's a perfect Horizon version of the kind of funny theme. Hey, we're thinking Elden Ring. And he's like, Do you have any ideas what that sounds like? I'm like, Well, I YouTubed it, and apparently the theme song leaked. So what about this? And then he sends back that. I'm like, Yeah, you fucking nailed it. <laughs> so that's really have you cool. ever have you ever thought of Carter getting Carter to make individual theme songs for you? you each oh oh yeah oh that yeah. would be one cool. day when we have a studio <laughs> would we be can cool. properly make andy defend the kind of funny world championship i want us all to have our own unique <laughs> oh, theme songs exactly. and you know what mr host of the number one two three four five six and seventh best video game website gamespot.com Tamo hussein i think we need to make sure that you have your own intro as well oh i would love that yeah. i would love that mm-hmm. that would mm-hmm. make me so so happy but i i do want to say that here i am hosting this show, the kind of funny games cast. And we're out here. We're about to talk about Elden Ring for the next hour or so. We have a whole bunch of gamers here that's going to talk about that shit. But then there's me. You know, people out there, I've heard them in the comments like, Tim Geddes, I don't know that you're a gamer. Do you really have it anymore? Have you lost it? And I don't know. I don't even see any respect from you guys. Here I am hyping you up, giving you your proper intros. Andy, while Barrett brings up the picture that I just sent him on Slack, can you just give me a proper intro of some sort? Can you hype me up for a second? The best baby blues in San Francisco, the motherfucker who beat Cuphead, mm-hmm. Timothy Geddes. Let's add something to the list, everybody. Oh, I fucking whoa, find whoa, him whoa. Soon, baby. Let's whoa. fucking go. Let's oh, go. my God. Good job, Geddes. Yeah. Wow. Let's go. They said it couldn't Holy be shit. done, and I was one of them. I can't believe this happened, but with the support and help of my friends on this panel, we made it happen, Hell everybody. Yeah. I fucking, I did it last Friday, go. and I had to hold this into myself. I was like, I can't tell people. I need to wait for the games cast to reveal <laughs> this. But, oh, man. I what does the so G and Getty it. stand for? Gamer right there. I'm a Holy fucking cow. gamer, everybody. Man, what I do right after that, him. I booted up Elden Ring. How long did I play it? Not long. I'll tell you that. <laughs> and you know what I switched to, boys? That Sekiro. Sekiro. Let's go. No. No. I'm like, no, oh, we're in. I'm Let's like, no, oh, we're in. We'll see how it goes. But I'm Stick just like, with it, Tim. Know. Well, Stick with it. Know. Once you get in the flow, you're going to fucking love Tim, it. Tim, how did it feel to press L1 when someone was trying to swing a sword at you and go, ka yeah, you know what? I'm getting that yeah, parry. I understand that yeah. dodge and parry magic. But you know what? Yeah. We're going to talk about that a whole lot because this is the kind of funny games cast where each and every week we get together to talk about video games and all the things we love about them. You can go to youtube.com slash kind of funny games to get it or roosterteeth.com. You could also get it as a podcast by searching your favorite podcast service for kind of funny games cast. And we'll be right there for you. If you wanted to get the show ad free, if you wanted to watch it live as it's recorded and you want the exclusive post show you got to go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games just like our patreon producers gordon mcguire at james davis makes pranksy tyler ross delaney twinning first responder nd julian the gluten-free gamer james hastings and casey andrew have all done we appreciate you all so very much uh if you don't have any dollars to toss our way on patreon that's totally cool if you're out there gaming like the real gamers that we are over on the epic game store please use our epic creator code kind of funny and anytime you're buying any Fortnite bucks rocket league bucks any of the bucks it helps us without costing you a penny more a uh, little housekeeping for you I'm super dope, so please tweet at me, at Tim Geddes. Let me know that I'm fucking dope, because I saw a lot of hate. I saw a lot of comments like, oh, Tim thinks he's going to beat this game. He's never going to. Oh, I beat it. Then I saw people, oh, Tim thinks he's going to platinum. There's no chance. Well, I fucking did it. Where so are the haters at? This. Where are they at? all at? They're quiet. Oh, they're quiet. Hey, it's been real quiet, quiet right now. Everyone's I, I can been hear the leaves quiet. changing colors. They're so quiet. Holy oh, shit. Oh, oh man. God. Now, finally, Gia finally has a real reason to love me. You know, I understand. <laughs> oh, my God. 
God. Anyways, <laughs> I was going to say to him, like, your beard yeah. has been getting more and more long and more and more gray, and I liken mm-hmm. it to the AT mechanic in Sifu. That's what's Is happening. that also because you've just been so entrenched in Sifu, you've not had time That's to, like, it. do oh, your yeah. thing? Team 52 now. Mm-hmm. I am 52. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Anyway, oh, yeah. enough bullshit. Enough of all this stuff. Let's get into it. Elden Ring. A lot, a lot of people predicted it might be kind of funny. It's game of the year at the end of this whole thing. Y'all have been playing it. Y'all have some thoughts. And I want to hear him. Andy Cortez, you are the lead reviewer here. I kind of funny for Elden Ring. So I want to start with you. How long have you played the game? And what are you thinking about it right now on the patented kind of funny scale that is one through five? Terrible, bad, okay, great, amazing. First off, like a hell of a game to be my first official review on. Everybody knows that from software games are not only difficult in terms of gameplay, but they could be a little vague in terms of direction. And playing this game without <laughs> any YouTube videos to look up, just me and Tam and uh, Imran texting each other. Uh, have you been? Where, where in that group chat? <laughs> Kids, let me tell you, man. I've been alone. <laughs> no, 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 no. I've been, no, I've, no, not a group chat. Separate DMs. Like uh, it was, yeah. it was me and Tam, and then we uh, Imran and a couple DMs. Um, I have put in sixty-three hours of this game on. Woo! PC and about nine hours on Xbox. Uh, I decided to start a new game, play with Stoneback Mike, so we could test out some co-op. Uh, this game is is an absolute five out of five, amazing from me. I can't get enough of it. From Software has built something really special here. They essentially took a Dark Souls game and made it big, and a lot of people use that as a uh, as a sort of um, way to knock the game, but it is. It's kind of the best situation possible. They took the magic of really cool NPCs to talk to, um, secrets everywhere, like exploration is at an all-time high in this game. This game is gigantic, okay? I, I'm giving it a 5 out of 5, and I have not beat it, keep in mind. After um, s- how many hours? 69? 63. 63 63 um nice. it got to a point where me and tam were playing it we kind of realized yeah wow this is a lot <clears throat> bigger than we thought it was going to be we weren't really expecting the scale of this we sort of understood what from software wants you to do in terms of progressing the story and progressing the actual narrative and campaign to actually get to the end game of it all and it got to a point where i was like i don't i don't want to rush this i am loving the, every second of this i want to keep exploring I'm still exploring. I'm still seeing things I've never seen before. Last night I had a big breakthrough for another dungeon that is not, um, it's not priority. Uh, in other words, like it's just one of these side dungeons that you could do if you want, but going there, it's massive and it feels really important to a lot of what's happening. Talking to NPCs there, tr- backstabbing other NPCs. There's just like a lot of cool shit happening with the internal politics of the story, but the game is unbelievably big like i can't i can't stress that enough the map keeps expanding we keep on going to new areas and suddenly tam sends me an image of his new map and i go oh shit and i unlock a further part and go oh shit like this is gigantic and not, not only is it big across the levels of verticality in this game are absolutely astounding um finding caves up top Knowing that there's something down there, there's so many moments where I get to the edge of a cliff and I think, oh, down there is death. I'm just going to fall. That's just that's like any other cliff in a Souls game. You fall off, you die, which is still likely the case. But you look down there and there's there's shit down there to go explore. How you get down there is up to you. There's a lot of paths you can take. There are ways that you could drop down. There's way ways you can risk. This game is, I think, just so impressive in terms of having the level of from software imagination and polish but in a gigantic skyrim like open world like i haven't felt this way about a game since take a fucking guess breath of the wild i haven't felt this way about a game like this since then um and, and you mentioned like you're talking about like the scale of the game and it being you you being 63 hours long and still haven't been beaten it and that's one thing i wanted to bring up early because like 
I think the number going around uh, was 30 hours because they said this game is going to be 30 hours <laughs> long for you, for you to just mm-hmm. beat or mainline the game. Right. I have no idea in what world anybody is beating this game in 30 The context hours. for that is it is very much the case. Like, this is something, this is the revelation that Andy and I had where we realized what was happening. The context for that is it's effectively the same setup as you can, at 30 hours, you can, there's a, the Breath of the Wild equivalent is you can go and fight Ganon. Um, so there's a part of the map, an area of, or there's a part of the map and an objective within your overall objective that is basically the final objective. And once you've done two things, I'm trying to avoid spoilers here. Once you've defeated two Elden Lords, you can go take on the 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 final area if you want to. Okay. But it's going to be an uphill struggle. The game actually says when you go into this area, it's going to be rough in here. So make sure you're prepared. But so you can in thirty hours go in there and fight so, uphill struggle and then that complete makes so the game. Sense. But then like you're the, leaving, yeah, you're leaving so is, much on the table. To, to like to compare it to Breath of the Wild, and we'll I'll throw it back to you, Andy, in a sec, because I know you're still going. But like to compare it to Breath of the Wild, right? Like we're in that game, you have the four divine beasts to take mm-hmm. out, and then you can go for go to Ganon, but you can go again in any moment to beat the game. Yeah. Elden Ring has like a similar sort of setup, but it is more like I think it's like seven or something like that of like things to do. Uh, that'll that'll probably help you out in like your your journey to the final thing, uh, and with that, like I'm probably on thing two right now, and I am mm-hmm. like to spoil me when I go right, like I'm like 25 hours into the game, and I feel like I've barely scratched the surface and put in a dent, and so like it makes a lot of sense that like okay, once I do this next thing, I'm probably gonna open up the final thing, but I'm just not gonna want to go to the final thing. I got to the final thing uh, after a lot of ex- exploration, a lot of me and Tam go- going back and forth. Hey, how did you get in there? Where is this mm-hmm. place? And I, it was just a lot of me and Tam taking photos of our screen and texting it to each other. Um, I, I finally I've got used, there and I, Tam I, I, said... I, I was going to say, ahead. I think I've used my actual phone to talk with someone in the <laughs> last three days more than in years, like me and Andy, like calling each other, like every day, like actually speaking on the phone, not Discord, not on like <laughs> yeah. something else. It's like, I was like, this is wild, man. <laughs> He's like um, the dial wheel. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I had gotten to this final area and I wasn't really aware of it, but then Tam was like, oh, I think that's the final zone. And I said, you know what? It makes sense because it has a different way of going through it um, that wasn't like the first part of the game it's like very very vague and i want to just try to avoid spoilers as much as possible and then i thought oh okay i see what they're doing you you need two uh defeated elden lords so that probably means that defeating the other elden lords probably going to be a a diet version of what we just experienced Mm -hmm. and it's not and it's still fucking awesome and i went to a place last night that tam had been to way before i i did and um it is as large and as intricate as you would hope it'd be. Um, with all of the familiar from software level design principles, uh, all of that stuff is still in play. The incredible boss fights, mini boss fights. There is so much to do in this game, and I, I'm so stoked for everybody to finally get their hands on it because this is something really special. Um, yeah, I, I'm in love with this game. Bless, how long have you played so far? And mm-hmm. do you feel comfortable putting us a, a score on it so far or even a score for your experience so far so, or no? So I, I don't. I've played about uh, 25 hours. And like if I were to score my experience so far, I would put it around like a four out of five being great. Um, I'm like very conflicted with this game. And I'm the more I play it, the more I, I'm enjoying it as like a work of art and game design more so than enjoying it as a game itself. Because like, on one hand, I think it's exactly what Andy's talking about in terms of the from software game design, the art design, the world design, having that level of like quality in like uh, each of the areas where you go into one area and like, you know, Andy, you make the Breath of the Wild comparison. I think it's going to be a very popular comparison for people to make. I want to make the comparison. And I'm like trepidation about making the comparison because I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, you compare every single open world game to Breath of the Wild. But I think the the way to make it even easier for people to understand is like, Playing this game after Horizon is like the exact antithesis to that kind of open world where it is not an icon spill. It is not you go on your map and knock off the activities or whatever. It is legitimately like it, they they have the the Fallout 3 moment of opening the vault and you walk out. And they have two of those moments in this game. What which the fuck? are incredible. Uh, they don't have two, man. They've got... Like they got more. Four, four or five. They've got T- four or five. No, no, sorry. I'm reacting to the B-roll that we just saw. 
Of this oh, man just fucking rocket jumping on a horse. Yeah, these <laughs> these ho- th- those uh, spots are at- littered across the open world, Tim, in order to help you out with getting onto what higher is this? plateaus. I've not seen one. Yeah, I, I was about to say, I was like, is that a Mario about- painting that that man's about to jump that? into? I've not seen fuck? that. You've not seen that? No, where's the I'm painting thing? Either, no. So all of these things, so these are little side... Oh, no, we'll I know where that is. I know where that is. No, 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 my bad, my bad. These are... These are side activities that you find around the open world, and it's a painting of somewhere of this gigantic yes, place. Now. And you go to that location, and something special will happen. See, so, this is how big the game is. I saw that hours ago to the point where I forgot it. And I was like, what is this? That's how big this game <laughs> and, is. And, and I and thought that, that was like a visually like representative of like what I think you guys are talking about with Breath of the Wild, right? In that comparison. Yes. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's the that's the perfect mm-hmm. one to point to in terms of like the world is very much designed. Like every inch of the world feels like it has thought put into it, and it is vast and it is very impressive in a way where I take two steps and like the placement of an enemy is meaningful for whatever for some reason. There is like some kind of point of interest. I'll go I'll go over here on them like to the let's say south west of the map and there's like a walking building i'll go to like the northeast and there's like some other thing where i'm like what the fuck is that and i'm asking myself that question what feels like every 10 to 20 minutes while playing the game in the way that like in another very big open world game uh that came out in 2017 that i really love that's one of my favorite games of all time that game did a lot of the same things too uh and i think drawing your interest to every place yeah, yeah drawing your interest like it even has like the thing where you, you you do like one of the fallout 3 open the vault moments that we're talking about and i immediately took a screenshot and i sent it to andy and tam and it's the thing of you walk out and you see like fucking four to five different like big buildings you see like a vast landscape you see like valleys you see like big hills and it's like oh i can go anywhere now like i can literally do any of this any of these things and, and i think blessing that mm-hmm. moment is caught on camera in our uh let's play that's coming out tomorrow oh yeah so well, no, you can that's, watch that's moment number one like in that you can in, watch I, blessing experience that tomorrow that is in a let's play right me experiencing that first like mm-hmm. leave the vault moment there is a second today, leave the vault moment right? that is even today as the people no are the game the gameplay uh embargo is a day later oh there you fine. go so yeah you can check that out tomorrow uh but yeah there is like a second one of those that blew my mind even more to the point where i had to put down my controller i was like I can't believe how big, vast, and absolutely gorgeous this world is. Uh, So I think on that note, they knocked everything out the park. The the part where I get conflicted about the game is more so to do with the game design. And that's more so to do with the ways in which they translate the From Software ethos of game design into this big open world that is like, we're not going to hold your hand. We're going to make everything kind of obfuscated and very difficult. And for me, that's taken so much fun out of exploring the world, not necessarily like the combat difficulty, because I fuck with combat difficulty. I really like, you know, struggling with combat in that way, more so in the way of like, I'll chase shit down and feel like I end up with nothing all the time. Right. And like, it's the thing of like, I'll, I'll like chase down. Let's say I'm talking about a point of interest, right? Like I'll, I'll find a cave or I'll find something that seems curious. I'm like, oh, let me check that out and I'll follow, I'll follow whatever it is. And the journey will be cool, right? The journey will be the thing of like, oh man, okay, I'm taking down this cave. Oh man, I meet this guy who's like maybe about to rob me. All right, cool. I fight him halfway through. He's like, wait, no, we're cool. And I'm like, I don't trust you. I'm still going to kill you. I kill him and I like take his things and I'm like, none of this shit is going to be good. It's going to be helpful for me. Like mm-hmm. the, 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 the gear I'll pick up from him feel like, will either be like, cool, this doesn't work with my character class or it's already weak than whatever I'm rocking. And I find that happens over and over and over again where the rewards for me um, chasing the things that pique my interest don't feel like they ever amount up to anything worthwhile. Like I've done uh, multiple catacombs, which are kind of like the mini dungeons in this game. And the ones that I've completed have given me ashes of war, which are like these cool special abilities. And none of them have been things where I'm like, cool, I'm going to replace my current ash with this. Like, I feel like I'm constantly in terms of the actual gamified reward that I'm getting in the game. I feel like I'm getting stuff that just doesn't, match up to things that i already have or just don't match up with my class uh on top of that i feel like there's a disconnect between like how the game wants me to play and how i and i think many people are actually going to play the game where in traditional from software games i'll use bloodborne as, as an example i get to places where i'm like cool there's this long stretch corridor i'm trying to get to the next lamp in bloodborne and 
you know, I know that I'm supposed to be here because of the linearity of the game. And so I'm going to take out these enemies and get the blood echoes and continue to level up my character. And there's like a certain level of like steady progression you're making in Bloodborne that makes sense for wherever wherever you're at in the game. And sometimes you might end up somewhere that's like you're not supposed to be here, right? You get kidnapped and it's like, cool, now I'm at a high level area in Bloodborne. Um, Elden Ring, because it's so big, you can kind of go anywhere. And I found myself ending up places time after time after time again where I'm like, I have no idea if I'm supposed to be here. And it's frustrating because what that has resulted in is me going to the same uh, field of giants that I can take out called Stormhill, which is like, there's like probably like six or seven giants that just hang out on Stormhill. And for each giant I kill, I get a thousand runes, which are your blood echoes or your souls in this Good game. Good XP farming right there. Yeah, great yeah, XP easy. farming spot here. The problem, with, the problem with it for me is the fact that I've done that like 35 times. Like no joke, I go there over and over and over again because it's the only place I can rely on in terms of, okay, I can farm here for XP. And then also like, I don't feel like, I, 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 I this is like all reliable for <clears> me where like there's not really any other place in the map for me where I'm like, Oh yeah, I know I'm supposed to be here. I'm going to continue to try and grind out this area. Half like most of the areas are areas where I'm like I'm probably underleveled and the game doesn't really communicate to you at all where you're supposed to be because for the kind of open world game it is, there's not anywhere where you're supposed to be. You're kind of s supposed to just go out and explore, but I think there's a level of non-handholdiness that on one hand is very novel and very cool and very for forward looking, but on the other hand I think makes it so that I just retreat and I just go like, cool, I'm just going to continue to farm and continue to find the gamified shit that I can in this game so that I can feel powerful and I can go do the thing, like feel enabled to go do the thing. Um, and again, I'm only 25 hours in, like, you know, the, 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 this is only a problem that I've started to like really feel the ramifications of at like hour, I'll say 14 after I beat the first boss, because that was like the thing that I knew I, uh, uh, I needed to do. And like the game opened up and I'm like, cool, let me explore. And the exploration just hasn't been as like rewarding and novel or not novel and rewarding. I'll say, uh, as I've wanted it to be that said, there are so many other like dope, like 10 out of 10 S tier things that the game does that like, I can't sit here and just like, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to spend most of my time slandering it. Cause I think like the game is phenomenal in so many other aspects, but I'm in that weird place of like trying to figure out how I feel about it because it's so different and so like specifically from software. And I don't know if they knock it all the way out the park, even though they knock so much of it out the park. Tam, you are mm. reviewing this for GameSpot.com. Yes. yes. How I long am. have you played? And what kind of money score would you give it? I am at 60 ish hours now. Um, and on the kind of funny scale, I'd give it a five out of five. Uh, on the GameSpot scale, it's getting a ten out of ten. Damn. Um, that is a a uh, a rare score, which is made less rare because I've given a few ten out of tens in my time. <laughs> but as far as the way I see it, is I only play the best games, baby. Yeah, um, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I interestingly a lot of the things that Blessing says are really kind of not working for him are fundamentally reasons that I would give it a ten out of ten. Same. Like there's 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 an idea that um so with the with the grinding thing that blessings talked about like I've I've never found an area that I felt like I need to grind to be in. Um I found areas that I realized that I should probably not be in and that just went in another direction and realized there's areas that I can be in. Um and that's kind of like what this game is about and what I love about it. It's just completely hands off and that is typical for from software right but it's just not what we expect from a open world game so the crux of my review is what makes this game special is that it's like so contrarian to the way that open world games are designed and in from my perspective over designed they are so molly coddling they are just like you need to go ahead they're designed to kind of always make you feel good and make you feel like the hero but as we've come to know from Software's games aren't designed to make you feel like a hero. They make you, they're designed to, from the outset, tell you you're trash. You're nothing. You're a tarnished. You're a plague ridden rat. You're a, you're an undead, cursed undead. That's what these games are about. And then they leave you with the challenge of prove yourself in this world. Prove yourself and show that you deserve the respect instead of giving the respect just willy nilly in the way that most open world games do, where you like, pick up a something off the floor and it's an item and it's like oh it's an s tier item or you help someone i don't know like find their missing dog and it's like oh thank you this has changed my life this is so good this is a game that makes you fight for the feeling of satisfaction 
But at the same time, it's a game where that satisfaction comes really easy because it's deeply rooted in a sense of discovery and exploration. The amount of times I've been wandering into, like wandering around and like stumbled into a massive castle and been like, oh my God, I did not know this was here. It's like so many times. At the same time, I get that same level of satisfaction from like dropping down off a cliff, turning around and seeing that there's a little cavern there and then going into that cavern and it's marked on the map. And the thing that I really love about it is it creates this texture and a, like a realness to the world. Like it, it doesn't feel like a game designer placed this hair for you to have a game experience with. It feels like this is a weird um, ancient world and this cavern is just here. There's, this wasn't designed for me to see. It's going to be, it was just formed in this landmass. And then you walk into this cavern. The amount of times I've gone into a cavern and been like, wow, there's nothing in there. And then looked closer and been like, oh, there's a lot in here. And then carried on all the way to the bottom and like ended up in a boss fight that was impossible. And I've just been like, I can't do this. I need to go somewhere else and come back later. And then returned many, many hours later just with like a massive sword and just absolutely <laughs> curb stomped that boss. That feeling of never being guided, never being told, and instead just a game trusting that you have a sense of adventure and a curiosity and trusting you to know that I'm not supposed to be here, or maybe I should come back here later. That is such an empowering feeling in this game. And it's something that was big, a big part of Breath of the Wild as well, right? Like th those games are designed to be in the classic Dark Souls fashion, quite linear in a lot of ways. So when we got let onto this open world that had a lot of the fundamentals of a Zelda game, it was a breath of fresh air. It was revolutionary for a lot of us. That is the same impact for Souls games, where it's like, Yes, they have an illusion of openness and they do have small degrees of openness within each game, but we've never had a truly open world experience. And then now that they've given it to us and they've done it by also filtering that through the lens of their own design ethos, it is once again a revolutionary experience. It's a whole breath of fresh air. And it is like the antidote to games like Horizon, which I think are excellent. Like Horizon is a great game, but when I see those icons pile up, man, I'm just like, how much do I really care about that activity? How much do I really care about that character? Whereas in this game, there's no icon. So I go to a place, find a character, and I don't know what it is in store for me. Maybe it will be something that's not super deep, but at least it made the world slightly richer. And at least I can take pleasure in the fact that I found this. I uncovered this. And if I'm lucky, I can send a picture of it to Andy and be like, have you seen this shit? And Andy will be like, no, I've not seen that. Where is that? Tell me. And I'll send it to him and he'll go there. Or I can ask Andy, hey, uh, someone's mentioned this thing. Do you know where it is? And he'll be like, yeah, I saw it there. And let's figure it out together. Like that sense of kind of community, that is what Souls games are about. That That is what the original, you know, kind of demon souls thrived off of no one knew about demon souls no one was buying demon souls no one was playing demon souls but the people that were were having this experience where they had this hard hard game that was so hard to understand and obtuse and they came together and they figured it out together and you can ask andy that is what we've been doing for the last few days and it has felt like nothing i have felt since that first demon souls playthrough wow before we move on to the many questions i have about this Let's talk about our sponsors. Your to-do list is absolutely bonkers between those meetings, errands, chores, and making sure you get some you time too. So make sure you get a little time to yourself with some help from DoorDash. DoorDash brings you what you want to eat right now, right to your door. Desperately craving late night snacks? Or have you forgot one key ingredient for dinner? Or maybe you just want to stock up for the week? Well, DoorDash has it all in one app. How do I know so much about DoorDash? Well, I'm Greg Miller and I use DoorDash way too much. Uh, if you were watching the Kind of Funny podcast when we were talking about a whole bunch of different stuff, Nick mentioned the ice cream place you really like. And I said, where is there one around me? And I said, yes, there is. And I ordered from it and I had it on the post show. I was eating ice cream on the post show, giving you a review of the ice cream all because of DoorDash. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code Kind of Funny. That's 25% off up to a $10 value and zero delivery fees in your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the app store and enter the code kind of funny. Don't forget that's code kind of funny for 25% off your first order with DoorDash subject to change terms apply. 
I don't care how soft or firm your mattress topper is. I don't even care how heavy your blanket is. There's only one thing you need to get a good night's sleep, and that's a good mattress. Get the only thing you truly need for a great night's sleep, a purple mattress. Only purple mattresses have the gel flex grid. It's a super stretchy, ultra squishy material that adapts and flexes around pressure points and doesn't retain heat. It's amazingly supportive and cushioning in all the right places, no matter how you sleep. How do I know so much about it? Well, of course, you've known for years Joey's used a purple mattress. You know Tim uses the purple pillow. And now, the future class of video games, blessing Eddie Oye Jr. is sleeping on a purple mattress. And he tells me all the time it keeps him cool, comfortable, and gives him a great night's sleep. Getting a great night's sleep starts with having a great mattress. Get a purple mattress. Go to purple.com slash kind of funny and use the code kind of funny. For a limited time, you can get 10% off any order of $200 or more. That's purple.com com slash kind of funny code kind of funny for 10% off your order of $200 or more. That's purple.com slash kind of funny promo code kind of funny terms apply. Now that we're back, I, I kind of want to segue from what Tam was just saying of the, the breath of the wild comparisons that I do think are going to con- continue to come up. And uh, a lot of that being that this is the first tr- like real open world version of a genre that has now defined itself over the last couple of years. Playing Breath of the Wild, I think the big thing was it feels like Zelda, and it is Zelda, but it doesn't have the dungeons, and it's not traditional in that way. Is there something about Elden Ring that you guys feel is missing that the other games have, the Bloodborns and Sekiro's and the, the Dark Souls games, that because it's open world, it doesn't have this one defining feature of those games? Damn. Uh, for me, I think that... So firstly, I'll say I struggle to find a lot wrong with this game. Like, I feel like there's there's nothing bad about this game. It's just the way that you it lands with you. Like, I think Blessing I, would agree. I don't even Go know on. if I'd agree. Like, it's the thing. I'm still figuring it out. Because yeah. I think I would say that my complaints are things that are bad about the game. Okay. Yeah. But I also, like, I, I, think, I think those same things are things that other people will take. Yeah, exactly. So from good. my perspective, like, one, you know, one, something that Blessing might hate is something that I would... I probably would be like, oh, I really like this thing. So that's the kind of game that is. Um, but like the one thing that if I had to kind of focus in on is the combat is what the combat is. You you know it pretty much. Like it's still that same thrilling, strategic kind of very uh, well paced and um, thoughtful combat. Um, and I I love it to death. And I think it's amazing in this game. It's so like thrilling. But what it doesn't have is a kind of like uniqueness to it if you get what i mean it feels a lot like dark souls 3 it feels a lot like dark souls 1 whereas a game like bloodborne it is more built around a certain rhythm of of gameplay um, mechanics where you know the visceral the gunshot that kind of stuff and the aggression um it was kind of built on the idea of being aggressive and on the front foot and sekiro has a more defined combat system as well where it's like counters and you know um split second timing and and proper deflect it doesn't have anything unique like that um it's got this top tier fundamentally like close to perfect combat system for me and then it's layered on things like um the uh special weapon abilities and a jump attack and and kind of this new counter system which is like when you got your shield up once you take a hit if you hit r2 immediately you kind of do a heavy counter attack which is kind of like the bloodborne visceral gunshot combo you just saw it right there Yeah, and not exactly the same, but it doesn't feel as good, but it is that. But otherwise, it is the combat you know and love, and where it's enhanced is by these ridiculous weapons and abilities and that kind of stuff. So that is the thing that is the closest to something I can say it's missing. But in all other respects, like, I'm struggling, man. I I was like, (laughs) I was like playing it. I'm like, I I hope this is, I don't want to give another 10 so frivolously, but, um, I, by the time I was done, I was like, no, this is absolutely a 10. Be true like, to yourself, Pam. I was, I, yourself. By the time I was done, I was like, this is undoubtedly. Like, I think this is one of the greatest games of all time. Holy shit. Wow. Uh, yeah. So, Bless, let, let's start with you on this one. What are the what are some of the cons? Actually, you know what? Let's go to Andy for the cons because you already, you already were a little negative on this. Andy. Um. So, cons, a lot of the negatives for me, I would say PC performance, not great. Um, I, I'm running into a lot of frame drops and things like that, and we don't have the day one patch yet, but hopefully that will alleviate some issues. Um, Interesting. I'm, I'm talking like 60 frames, and then I might, for a couple of seconds, drop enough to where it's like, that's noticeable. Nothing that is 
going to make me put the game down by any means, but definitely something that's there to call out. Um, I want to just call. I, I I know people will say like, "Wow, you were so negative about your Horizon experiences." So like, there's definitely negatives here for me. Performance is one of them. Um, I will say quality of life things that I would hoped from software would improve more upon. And I think that they've done a bit of it. Whenever I do see a quality of life thing, Tim, it's like getting a quality of life thing from Nintendo where you go, huh, okay, they do get it, you know? And every once in a while that will happen with FromSoft and you go, God damn, they are listening or they are understanding why this way is just better, right? This doesn't, you don't have to stick to your guns on this little issue. It's okay to improve this menu icon or this menu decision. Um, but there are a couple of things where um, you, around the world, Tim, you can pick up these things called rune, golden runes or whatever they are. They're equivalent to finding souls out in the wild. Or they're golden few, seeds? Uh, no, the no, no. Golden. They're, they're uh, equivalent to finding uh, blood echoes that you pop to give yourself more XP. Oh, yeah, runes. Uh, they're called like golden runes. Yeah, they have different levels to them, Tim. So like golden rune one gives you, I don't know, 50 it's like runes. like 200. And then... Golden Rune 7 might give you like 7,000. So you mm. pop that. It's an instant sort of XP hit that you can then use to level up or you can then use to purchase something, whatever it is you're trying to do. And there are some moments where uh, in your inventory might be full of them. You might have like 10 of Golden Rune level 1, 12 of Golden Rune number 2. And a lot of the times I want to use them in mass. Every time I use one, it takes me out of the menu. I have to go back into the menu, reuse one. So there's a lot. There's some things like that that like, in ways that Horizon just decided to move everything to your stash and not have that be an issue because they understand that, hey, you know what? Sure, we want to make an, an immersive experience, but it's less annoying to have to deal with going to an inventory stash. So they removed that totally, and I love that they uh, made that easier for the player. Um, these FromSoft games will still have moments like that. I wish co-op was improved uh, in a way that didn't have to be so ungamified. Everything in Souls games always has to kind of have a reason and a purpose for it. And that's usually why I love a lot of these things. But I do wish the co-op was more just make it a video game. I don't need to have this furl finger remedy thing to bring in a friend from the other world to summon him and if I don't have enough of those items, I can craft them. Or if I'm out of those items, I can go look for them in the open world. Like it becomes it's tedious. It's not hard to do. It's just tedious. I wish my friend could just join and it would be a seamless experience. There are also moments where uh, when I was playing co-op with Snowbike Mike, it's really neat to just run around the open world with your friends. You can't both be on horses, though, unfortunately. So that kind of stinks. You have to just be on foot. Um, and if you, if my friend summons me in one spot and I run all the way, we adventure together, killing a bunch of shit on our way, having a blast. When we get to a dungeon, I have to exit his world. I have to then go back to my world, my world in which I will spawn at that last space that I already was. And I have to travel all the way back to him, put down another summoning item. He has to see that on the ground, summon me back in. It's just tedious stuff. These games aren't meant to be played co-op in that way. It's, it's very it's very much so like, no, this is here kind of because we're allowing it to be here. <laughs> and it kind of just makes me really yearn for that co-op experience because I've never really cared about co-op in Souls games, but being able to play it and experience it, it's really fun. And I was actually having a lot of fun with it. I just wish it were made easier because I know a lot of people going into this game are going to... This might be a lot of people's first Souls games. I know a lot of people who have never played a Souls game because it's really been kind of scary or intimidating to get into. A lot of people are going to go into this one. This is going to be From Software's biggest game easily. And they're going to expect a seamless experience when they hop into their friend's game in Apex or in whatever other game where it's just, hey, invite me to your lobby. All right, cool, I'm in. And that won't be here. Uh, so that's kind of an annoyance as well. Um, to, uh, aside to, from that, piggyback. I just... Aside from that, I just think everything is fantastic. Uh, I want to piggyback off of like the new player thing too, because like that, that's a conversation we've been having a lot about Elden Ring leading up is the amount of new people that are going to probably hop in, and the idea that 
this game more than other souls game is probably going to be more approachable um because they've talked about it being more approachable i do not think it's going to be more approachable no. i think it, the, one of the things they mentioned is that i think miyazaki said that like this is going to be the most finished uh so, from software game it is not like i think it might no. be the one of the least finished from software games i think the tutorialization is bad in it uh and like i i think that comes down to it having a lot of the elements that you know from other from software games and souls games you know in the way that like xp works and the way that like uh uh equipping your character works and all these things but like you know in our let's play that me and andy did right andy kind of had to explain to me like how to two hand items versus like you know one hand items to go to like equip and un unequip my right hand and my left hand right because like the one other uh i guess soulsy from software game i've played i guess outside of Sekiro would have been bloodborne and mm -hmm. bloodborne i don't think had like the two handy thing and I, I couldn't even tell you if like dark souls uh in those games did i assume they might they might have done they or they might have had um that like stuff that, like how, that that text pops up and you just missed it and okay. i just want to point that out because i missed it the first time as well i missed yeah. it the, the text but pops it, up and it says here's how you two hand a weapon and i i had missed that my first time so i figured I, yeah. other people might I, miss it as I well do you think for a game that is so mechanically deep and has so much going on you have to go beyond just like a quick pop-up text for a, a lot of this stuff because like you even had to like andy texted me uh when you're quite a few hours into the game of like hey if you go to the pause menu and look to the right side you have things that you can equip in kind of a a, a like weapon wheel situation if you hold triangle and use items as opposed to like scrolling through them on your inventory menu uh on the down d-pad stuff like that where i'm like these are things that people should know and things that like would have been helpful if you the the game was if the tutorialization stuff was presented better and presented and was presented in a way that felt like it was for new players like Elden ring doesn't feel like it is for new players at all and it doesn't need to be right because like you know i think this is them trying to expand and like you know try and make their game bigger and at, at the same time in a lot of ways more hardcore which i completely respect but i do think that like a lot of the tutorialization stuff is feels like it's of like a past from software that doesn't need to do it like this anymore, especially because like a lot of the systems are repeat systems from their previous games. And like part of why I enjoyed part of why I enjoyed Bloodborne was the fact that like not only am I discovering the world and what's going on, I'm also discovering how to um, tackle these systems at the same time. The fact that these are the same systems, I don't think means that like you need to obfuscate it in this way. I think you just you know tell people how this shit works. Um, without it being a thing of like, now you got to play for 50 hours where you understand exactly like how to do X, Y, and Z thing. I also will say that playing this game, you know, I've I played Demon Souls on stream, I played Bloodborne on stream, I played Dark Souls 1 on stream, and I always had chat to help me out. Yeah. And that's one thing also is that like, I it, it was harder this time around because I didn't have that explanation. I wasn't playing a six-year-old game that people know back and forth. So not having that was definitely tougher with in terms of direction in terms of certain game mechanics um i i also wanted to point out uh, and piggyback of what bless piggy off piggyback off of what blessing was mentioning with a lot of the tutorial stuff yeah i think the when i when i was mentioning quality of life that pouch that sort of quick weapon wheel thing uh even though it's not a wheel but it, you'll understand it yeah. when, once you see it um definitely makes things easier and i think that is one of those quality of life things that they improved upon um but yeah throw out throw out some more tutorials out there for us um i think when miyazaki mentions that he thinks this will be the most completed in his mind he's thinking at least what, what i'm assuming he's thinking is that boss fights are easier here yeah you will have less sort of um you will have less stop signs in your way preventing your progress because um this game is definitely more approachable with boss fights you can summon these spirits that you found along the way you can upgrade these spirits that you found and they become stronger um and the game you has can all spirits i'm huh? in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes <laughs> yes exactly sir. game has spirits yes 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 so like uh, essentially whenever you beat an enemy or sometimes you just find these spirits in random chests or a random npc might give you some um you these are things you can summon in your fight to help you along some boss fights will have random npcs waiting for you at the entrances there's a lot of different ways that you can get help in this game i do think though on the opposite side of that that it might instill a false sense of confidence because for the most part i haven't struggled a whole lot with the bosses except for the ones that i was clearly yeah. under leveled for that happened a couple times um 
But walking around in the open world, you can't just summon these spirit friends wherever you are, Tim. So you might be walking down a corridor and there's two knights there and they're really tough to beat and you can't summon your spirits. So now it's like, oh, where's your friends at, dog? It's just you. Come on, let's fight. And I got my ass whooped by a couple of non bosses more than a lot of the regular bosses because it's like, man, this dude's really, really hard. And I, I've maybe grown dependent on these spirits a little bit. Mm. So you kind of have to like, hey, my ass is getting checked right now. I kind of have to understand that you got to fight. You can't just expect the enemy's aggro to go towards your spirit friends. You, can, you know, it, it becomes a lot easier in that sense. But yeah, uh, navigating sort of these bigger dungeons where these um, where your spirit friends are not uh, equipable, it can get a little bit tough in those in those moments. So, Bless, we talked a, a lot about the, the things you might not be loving. What are the things you love about this game? I do, I do think the game has the From Software level of, like, quality in, like, the... <laughs> In in like dungeons and a lot more of the, the the linear areas. The right now I'm in like the um I'm I'm in a dungeon on my way to what is essentially the second um like the the second big boss in the game um of like the main seven or however many however many the number is, and the moment to moment of like going through through that like all right I'm just trying to reach the next um uh, uh grace point right the what are they called Andy yeah the bonfire the grace sites. Of sites of grace thank you yeah i'm trying to i'm trying to reach the next grace site right and like we've just been trying, calling them not bonfires <laughs> the <Yeah>. non bonfires <laughs> yeah uh going about that like over and over again and like you know uh the actual the actual combat and and, and linear moments in the game i think do shine and i think are super dope and like the boss fights i have been incredible i think honestly if i had to pick my favorite thing from the game currently it probably would be the boss fights and just the 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 way in which they just happen where I will be exploring the world and I'll I'll uh, come up on I think they're called Evergals, which I don't totally Ever understand. Jail. Ever jails, okay. And I don't totally understand like what they are, but like I just love them because it is like a mm. kind of like an altar area where you walk it's, up, it's, you activate. It's literally it's like Phantom it. Zone, where like certain characters, enemies are basically trapped in a jail, and it's like a uh, fantasy jail, like the uh, uh, ISO cubes from dread or the phantom zone from they've been cast Superman. there but yeah they've been like put there for their crimes or whatever gotcha. it may be. Yeah. But, like when yeah, they happen there, they spell cool jail. as fuck by the way they spell, they spell jail the old english way which is g-a-o-l yeah and yeah, so i kept reading it as it's so cool it's yeah so cool. i called it ever gal the first several videos yeah. and people were like ever and i saw vadi vidya's uh uh sort of like experience with elden ring and he was like and here you walk into this ever jail and i was like ever what jail ever, what it's ever goal mate but like you goal. go in there and like you go in there and then like a, a, a horrible night that looks like he's ready to kick your ass just materializes and slowly starts walking towards you and you're like fuck yeah this is like, me for the next two hours that shit is so dope because it's like it's not only that right it is it is the the encounters that'll happen in the most random and like the most cool ways where I am like exploring, I'm on horseback and I see a big tree and I get to the tree and it's like, cool. Oh, this is an Ur tree. What the fuck is an Ur tree? And then like, <clears throat> like a big tree guardian will turn around and start swinging at me. And now I'm in a boss fight. And I'm like, I don't know why I'm in this boss fight, but I'm here now and I'm fighting this thing. Like I those had, are for, for I me like that, the cool moments of the yeah. game. I had that movie moment where I was like standing next to a pile of rocks and then I turned the camera and the rocks like an eye opened and then it stood up and it was a dragon. And I was like, what the fuck? And I just like jumped on my horse and just sprinted in the other direction to get away from it. Like those are the kind of moments that you're like, and like, and that's my walking, favorite. And those are my thing. Like that's my yeah. favorite moment in open world games. And like that's the thing is, you know, I I feel like I'm being hard on Elden Ring, and that's only because it's from software, and I consider them one of the best developers in the game. And so for me, it's like go hard or go home. Uh, but this is the type of open world game that I love, and they are they are going about it with a philosophy that I love, which is like, hey, let's just let people discover shit. Let's put up. Let's cover the map with a whole bunch of cool dope shit for people to discover and like let them go at it and so it is the ever jails it is those like weird trees things it is like coming up under dragon and being like is that a fucking dragon and then getting to a boss fight with a dragon it is like there was one for me uh yesterday where i was for a while i was chasing after this um structure uh because i saw it it was like uh uh 
on like on, on one of the hills and like this the, the second Fallout 3 coming out of the vault vault moment, right? Where I'm overlooking and I'm like seeing all these points of interest. I saw three or four buildings standing next to each other in the far distance. And I was like, I want to go there because that might be where I'm supposed to go next. I can't tell, but let me try to go there. I mark it with like uh the beacon that you have. Which I wish they did, and maybe they do, and I just haven't figured it out yet. I wish I could mark things while still, like, being in the world. Like, not having to pull out my map. Because there would be dope shit that I see in the open world where I'm like, I want to mark this. But I open my map, and I'm like, I don't know where this is at on my map. I wish I had, like, a telescope or some shit. But I digress. Uh, there's, a, there's a telescope in the game, but I don't know if that's a built-in I, I've mechanic. Never, I, I, I've never tried to mark something in the open world. Yeah. yeah. And that's very much, like, that's a Breath of the Wild mechanic that, like, because that has the beacons uh, too in, in the same way. So I wish I could do it while I was still in the game. But, like, I chased, after the, chased down those four buildings, uh, fought a bunch of shit to get, fought, like, two giants that were, like, ghost giants to get there. Um, got there looked at like the what were essentially like these big tall altars uh and i was like okay what the fuck are these i went to each of them it was like you need a key you need a key i was like okay bet uh i go to the top of the hill finally found the key and i was like okay cool i'm gonna use this to open one of the altars i guess i use it it then teleports me to a different part of the map that i was eyeing before but i didn't know how to get there it teleports me there and i'm like oh shit and then i get into a dope ass boss fight out of nowhere and it's like for me, that's like that is the dopest, tightest shit you can do in an open world Dude, game. It's just I, let, let people discover shit and get lost. I had a moment where I opened a chest and it teleported me to a place that was literally hell. And I was like, how the fuck do I get out of here? Every <laughs> enemy is just shitting on me immediately. And like yeah. the, pa the panicked like run like th away from enemies and out. I was like, I just it's like searching for just like a bit of light from the outside that I can like run towards so I can get out of there. And when I got out of there, let me tell you the sense of relief that I had. Like even now I think about that place and I'm like, fuck that place, man. <laughs> me, me, and, me and Tam experienced that sort of moment uh around the same time and the uh, first off the the music team uh, just yeah. absolutely killed it when you are teleported to that spot i have never felt so uncomfortable it, it is the most unsettling scary music i've ever heard and it's just it's kind of just like uh violins like really off key in in a in a way it's mm -hmm. just, it's it fucks you up mentally. Like I, I needed to get out of there immediately. Um, the, way, the way I describe the music in that area is like it's the kind of music that would play when the serial killer is about to pounce on or is like stalking their prey, the next person they're going to kill, but not in a movie, in a documentary. Like, holy shit. <laughs> that is where you're like, <laughs> I don't like where this is going one it, bit. It was so unsettling because you're so used to everything that we've seen of this game so far all the preview coverage it's a lot of natural vegetation it's beautiful trees and sure there might be some scary monsters but it's it's comfortable and it's familiar uh but there are moments that you are kidnapped in a way and sent to other places that are really really just awful to be in it, um i want to was... comment on all the conditional stuff that i really really love and it's something why i uh, another reason why i love what from software does with their games um similar to when we talk about bloodborne and we talk about when you hit that moment where uh you beat rom the vacuous spider and the whole world changes right um there are a lot of moments in in souls games like that where you do something and things will change fundamentally change your experience um from, uh, Elden Ring does that in kind of interesting, smaller, subtler ways. Um, nothing on that grand scale, but their day-night cycle is not only fantastic to look at, um, when we were doing uh, the Let's Play with Blessing, and Blessing fought Margit the Fell, who's the first mm. kind of main bossy fight, Blessing got that cutscene at night. Oh. And it was so much cooler at night like it it during the daytime it's a cool cutscene to to witness because of just sort of the lighting and I, I i think their their engine like obviously not blue point level uh in terms of looks because that is a ps5 game only but mm -hmm. i absolutely love and wasn't expecting to love the visuals of this game as much as i do dude the and visuals i shouldn't are incredible. have like, i should the atmosphere have been, is incredible yeah i shouldn't have been worried about that because their art direction is absolutely top tier like no yeah. i i think they have some of the best art direction in gaming out there and so they make 
they make the most out of what a lot of people would say is, you know, a bit of a dated type engine in terms of um, shaders and lighting and things of that nature. But I haven't for one second felt like, oh, this is ugly. See, I, think, I think like Wilson everything I've seen is great. Like I think in terms of, I think the only thing visually that stuck out to me was at sometimes well, I'm playing on PS5 in performance mode. Every now and then I would see like frame drops. Um, but it wasn't anything that crazy. It just was very subtle. But then also I would see pop in. Aside from that, like visually, the the color usage in this game is so good where you will see such yeah. bright uh, foliage versus like like gray stone structures. But even though they're stone structures, they're still like a bright gray that really pops. In our let's play, we came across like a big uh, kind of like gateway to um, to another part of the map, and like as I was coming coming across it, I was like, "Damn, that looks good!" <laughs> like, and we're talking about like a yeah. gate. Like, it wasn't anything special. It was just a gate. But it's Blessing like made the quote really of like, "You know design. me. I'm not the type to point at a gate. <laughs> That's a good looking yeah. gate." <laughs> like, I'm not everything looks gate super person. nice. Yeah, yeah. It, everything looks so good. And for me, for me, the moment where it really cemented was toward the end of uh, Stormvale Castle, which is one of the first big structures that you'll you'll encounter. There was a big boss fight with one of the big. Elden Lords or whatever the fuck they're called. And that the fucking like area in which you fight in is so cool. And I think it was in one of the gameplay demos, like gameplay trailers that yeah. came out last year. That area is so cool just from both like the fight itself, right? And the enemy that you're fighting who has like really cool design to him to the like fucking like swords and like a fucking dragon and like everything they, they have there that sets the scene, let alone like the verticality of the way that the path kind of winds down and then winds back up on the other side. It is top notch and the world is filled with that stuff. Um, it's honestly like may maybe some of the best level, like the best art design I've seen in an open world game. Yeah, I, I think what they also really do to kind of add that extra polish, right? Because I, I do think that. Yes, the engine is a bit dated, and I immediately I'm going to keep on making the Blue Point uh, comparison because Demon Souls looked kind of what we expected next gen to look like, and that is a PS5 only game, and obviously that's not cross generation uh, for a reason, and this is cross generation. The I think what added a lot to it is like the smoke effects, the environmental weather effects, the uh, the wind passing by and flying through. The volumetric fog, a great volumetric fog in this game. Holy cow, it looks really, really damn good. Especially yeah. when you're walking in forests at night. Got a lot of those sort of Red Dead 2 vibes. Yeah. When you're in forests and you're kind of like the, the sun is kind of diffusing through uh, what, what would be a foggy area. It's usually dense. Sick. Yeah, but um, what, what I wanted to comment more about the day-night cycle and the conditional things that you experience, there are nighttime-only bosses. There are not only nighttime-only enemies. Yeah. But these nighttime only bosses that I've experienced have caught me off guard every time. And it is the coolest shit where I'm walking. It's like, all right, I'm walking to a place. Uh, I've been here a lot. Um, granted, it's always been during the daytime. I just never made note of that. But suddenly I walk up somewhere and something flies down on me. And the, I see the fucking boss bar pop up at the bottom like, oh, my God, this is the coolest shit ever. And this game is filled with that stuff. This game is filled with surprises. And I feel like from software games have always done that. They've always found really cool ways to surprise you and make you go, holy shit, that's really cool and clever. But on an open world, it just takes it to a different level. Not only the nighttime bosses, but when Tam was mentioning going to different locations, I had I've always I've obviously had several of like holy shit moments, but one of them in particular I got to a random building in some area and I was like, what's in here? And there's a lift and I go down the lift and the lift just kept going down and it just kept going. Dude, and kept I know going. exactly where you're talking oh, about. Yeah. And, and that was a so fucking cool God. moment. And that suddenly was like, thing I'm looking at, I'm just like, what the, like, what the fuck, fuck is happening? Where am I right now? And yeah. like, I am just, and I'm lucky a lot of these moments are recorded. I'm just like, where the fuck am I? That what was... is this? This is gorgeous, but I'm terrified. Like, <laughs> and I think that's what they do such a good job of where you you may not be. Yeah, I, I think what I liked about what I really, really love about this game is that um I feel like I am this adventurer who is like Tam was mentioning, fighting the odds, right? And I've leveled up and I feel experience at this point, and I'm terrified to be here, but I still feel like I can give this area a shot and I'm going to give it my damnedest, right? I'm going to go out there and I'm going to try to take down whatever's out here. Do I dare go further though? 
Should I just call? Should I say fuck it? Let me go back up that lift because I don't want to see what else is out here. What if I lose progress? There's so much risk reward with all of this, and if you go fully through that area, and if you find the, <laughs> if you find the lift at the other end of the area and go up that lift and find out where that takes you, holy shit! This fucking game, man. That was God the damn, moment. It's a game. That was the moment where I realized we're not finishing this. Yeah, like when when it when you breach into what you're seeing, I was like, Andy, I don't think we're finishing this. Like, not <laughs> not for not for embargo. Wow. It's not happening. That and then later on, like we that keeps happening to the point where we, I was like, Andy, I'm giving up on finishing this. Like, I'm not I'm not gonna I'm giving up on rushing through this. I'm just it was gonna so slow great. Down. It was like that moment where you and your you and your uh, classmate friend agree that like we're not doing we're not finishing the essay. Yeah, we're yeah. both <laughs> doing this together. Cool, it cool, felt, cool. It felt so good for <laughs> for like me to say that, and then Annie to be like, "Yeah, I'm not. We're not. Put, like, let's slow down." And I was like, Thank "And it's you, the man. best decision because I've yeah. experienced so yeah. much cool shit." I, if what I I've just done try now, game it. what I've done now is I've gone back to the lowest point of the map, which is right in the south, and I'm like meticulously going to every part of the the kind of like map, the topography that looks like it could be something, and it is just a pure joyous kind of experience where sometimes i'll go and i'll find nothing sometimes i'll walk into a small village they're worshiping a fire they look at me and suddenly start fire start shooting fireballs from their eyes and i'm like what the fuck is happening in here and then like i'm off doing something else and it's like it's a game like it's one of those infinite games where it's like i could play this forever i could play this forever so well, i mean i feel like a lot of people are going to because like i i will be surprised if there's any review by the time this comes out, that actually has the game finished. For I will be incredibly long. suspicious of that I, review. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like there's no way. But also, this is a game that I foresee. Unless I drop off of it, which is very possible. I've already gotten to the point of rage quitting a few times. I see myself playing this game for months. Like I got some salty text from Blessing. <laughs> yeah, I was very much... I, I, Tam has gotten like... and maybe oh, Andy's gotten like the, gotta the heights of it. There, but I'm, like Tam has gotten like me at the height, also me at the lowest, being like, I've, I've played this I've, game for eight I've hours. I've not I've done read shit. It. I've read every single one, and I've been like... I understand this 100%. I get it. Like, I've had these moments as well. But then just you just keep playing for every moment. You're like, oh, I hate this. There's a moment you're like, this is the greatest thing ever. I wanted to point out where Tam was sort of mentioning what, what Blessing's issues were, were with the game and how Tam sees those as positives. And I largely felt uh, a bit of the same. When, when Blessing talks about finding these secret caves and caverns and tunnels and not feeling like you're getting rewarded, I think... I'm the complete opposite because I just get super stoked whenever I see one of those yeah. because I know I'm going to get a boss fight out of that. I know I'm going to get some sort of loot out of that. And what a you're lot of you're so broken is, that your reward is to get your yeah. kicked by a boss. Well, I love it, Andy. But, like, you guys, you're all in on from now. Let's go. <laughs> the thing I, the, the, these the boss thing fights is, is, is your loot good? Like my because I, I I understand the idea of like the the journey is the reward. And like, you know, getting the boss fight is a reward. And like I I love that stuff. And honestly, like a lot of this, a lot of these things are the same things I would say about Breath of the Wild. If somebody came to me and was like, Oh, I don't like the Kor Korok seed. I'm like, it wasn't about the Korok seed, it was about solving exactly. the puzzle. Yeah. But like I and I understand that that is going uh -huh. to be the thing people turn around for me in this game. And I totally understand that I get that. I think the thing for me with the gamified nature of this or not even with the ungamified nature of this game is that like I think in some points they needed to gamify more where I'm at for so much of my journey in Elden Ring, I've been like, I want to get more powerful. I want to level up. I want to find the next piece of gear that is going to turn me into a god. And not the, the kind of god that's going to fucking kill everything in my way because I understand that this isn't the kind of game they want you to suffer. But also in the way where I'm like, I feel like I'm getting something, like anything out of my journey that I have to show for other than, cool, I saw a cool boss and then I got a t-shirt as a reward, right? Like, I want to get to the end of a cave and get a dope-ass sword that I'm going to like discard my current sword to use. And I'm not getting that. Like, I get there and I'm like, I, I get to the end of the cave, do a boss fight, and I have, like, I come out and I'm like, I got nothing to show. Uh, and for so me, for I don't me, know. For me, that's a flaw. On the, opposite, on the opposite side, I'm leaving, not only beating that boss, I'm leaving with a shit ton of runes with a weapon I might completely change to. And if it's a tunnel, I love these tunnels because when you're inside of these minecrafting, these minecrafting, these mineshaft tunnels, you are getting uh, smithing shards to upgrade your weapons and that is like incredibly important you want to mm -hmm. go to these tunnels because you're always going to see a random dude just like pickaxing at a wall and you know oh there's going to be items there that i can loot and then use that when i go back to the uh blacksmith so that he can then upgrade the current weapon i'm using 
So like whenever I see a tunnel, I'm like, oh, this is gold for me. Because not only maybe I won't be able to upgrade the weapon I have now, but I have another weapon that's lower level that I've been waiting to find the right items to upgrade that later on. So it's always about the loot, but it's always maybe I'll get a cool weapon. If not, I'm going to have 8000 runes. I'm going to have 16000 runes after I beat that boss. So like there's always a reward there for me. Um, I've never looked at these Souls games to be on the equivalent of Borderlands where it's like, Oh, I'm get whatever gun I get there. That's going to replace my whole thing because it kind of it has to fit what your play style and what your build is. But leveling up the stuff that I have anyway is always the reward. Anyway, I think for me, that, for me, that stuff worked better in the, when the games are linear. I feel like when it's open world and it is so much about like going off and being, I guess, being rewarded for the exploration. I would think that the reward would be would be turned up a little bit more because, like in 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 Demon Souls or in like even in Bloodborne, right? Like. I was solely down with the idea of like, cool, my reward here are the blood echoes. And it is like, may maybe possibly I get a weapon that I'm going to keep in use. Right. But like those are, those are rarer cases, but I think they worked in a game like Bloodborne where it's a little bit more contained where like 25 hours into Elden Ring, I feel like I've one barely scratched the surface, which is kind of cool. But also I'm like, man, like I, 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 I wish th I need, I need a bit more from the game here. Cause even with like my, my runes, I, almost dislike the rune system in this game because it's the same it's the same as always worked in a from software game where it's like if you die your, your runes get left wherever you were you have to go back and chase down that uh, those runes i feel like it disincentivizes open world exploration uh to an extent where i don't always want to go down the same path if i die and i lose my runes that means i have to go down the same path to, to go and grab my things that also means that like the more i feel free to explore the more i'm going to have more runes and the more i'm like terrified to lose my runes and i end up just going back uh, teleporting back to one of the sites of grace to turn them in or in my case i'll have like my, i'll need like i'll need to turn in ten thousand runes to a level up i have eight thousand cool let's take a trip to storm hill farm some farm some giants get up to that next level cool now let me turn it in and go about exploring the world again and i feel like my gameplay loop just keeps getting reverted to that same thing of like cool you're getting you're making a little bit of progress don't get too too excited because now like you're gonna be scared to take two steps anywhere in this game because you're just gonna get killed and lose all your shit. So I can't say I can't say my experience of that is has been different for any other FromSoft game though. But I think like, in a other yeah. FromSoft game, them being linear makes it better. Like the, losing your runes in a in a linear from software. I'll just use Bloodborne because that's the game I play the most, right? You, losing your blood echoes in Bloodborne, I'm gonna go down that same path because I only have one path to go down, right? Like the game is linear enough to where I don't have to worry about that. In an open world game, it's like, dude, I I have a million paths to go down and the game wants me to explore, obviously, because it's, everything is tailored around exploration in terms of like the pathing and, and, and everything. When I lose my blood echo or my um, runes in, in Elden Ring, I, I, I have to go chase down that same path. And for me, it's like, I don't know, like it doesn't seem, it doesn't feel right, I guess, for the exploration of, mm. of a game that is, so wide and like wants me to kind of like it, it wants to push me to explore i feel like the I, I feel like the the rune system goes the opposite way where it makes me not want to explore Ooh, a system that i that i would love for them to bring in bless mm -hmm. Re real quick i i want to say i want to get to what you're about to say andy but tam needs to go so i want to mm -hmm. give him a real quick moment of what are the last things you want to say about the elden ring experience so far for you yeah, I think like a lot of the things that Blessing has said is fundamentally, like we said earlier, like it is 100% true. It, I think this is going to be a very divisive game. I think that for the people who it really resonates with, it's going to be a game that really stands up as one of the greats for them. And I'm one of those people, like I, I definitely will understand when people say, you know, it doesn't work for me. It's frustrating. It's not rewarding enough. But for me, I am currently in a position where I was like, I think this is, like I said, the antidote to what has really made me tired with modern video games if you get what I mean, like the gamification of everything, the constant need to tell me I'm great and give me shiny things and overwhelm me to the point where nothing is meaningful anymore. That has been something that I really struggle with, even in games that I know that I'm enjoying, like Horizon, like, um, you know, Dying Light for, for aspects of it. This is the complete opposite, where it's like I'm rediscovering the power of 
uh, a good open world and what it can really bring to a game. The sense of discovery and exploration, and adventure, and the curiosity it can uh, kind of inspire, and then the kind of fundamental gameplay if it's strong in combat, how rewarding it can be to overcome challenges. And for me, like I said, I know some people won't get it. For me, this has been kind of a spiritual and and really like uplifting experience in a lot of ways there was a period recently where i was like i'm just not feeling games right now like i'm not feeling nothing's hitting nothing's connecting with me and the moment i started just playing playing this i realized why and it's because of all that i just said and i feel empowered again i feel like revitalized and i feel in the same way that most people felt after they played breath of the wild or while they were playing breath of the wild this, that's what I'm having right now. Like the world is shinier and brighter and a little more exciting to be in because I'm playing this game and it's giving me so much. Um, I think it's an incredible experience. So Tam, I'm going to leave you with the most difficult question to answer. And I only want a yes or a no, nothing else. And then you okay. leave this Discord call. Okay. I know you're not done with this game, but with where you're at right now, mm -hmm. is this the best From Software game? Yes. Oh! We'll see you later. We'll see you later. Okay. Bye. Bye, TM. <laughs> I didn't expect that. I did That's not crazy. expect the yes for that. I really did not expect a yes. And now, jumping off that, Andy, uh, I know you want to say what you were about to say, but real quick, do, do you have an answer to that question? I, I think Bloodborne is still my favorite. Um, okay. And it, I, I, do, I think they do a lot of great things similarly, but yeah. I think getting into the lore of Bloodborne was, is what really through it you know to a different level for me and a lot of that required watching videos and watching people break down the lore <laughs> but when it's all said and done like i just think that game is is fantastic with the story it's telling um the thing i wanted to mention the blessing about losing your runes in a system that i hope that they i had wished that they had brought in was the sekiro purchasing money bag uh mm, sort of thing yeah. where um in sekiro tim in the same way in any souls game in sekiro you have money that if you die you leave it there and you can go pick it back or you lose half of it it's a diff bit of a different system but uh in sekiro if you don't want to risk that you can buy these money bags and those are items that you just hold in your inventory and i wish that there was a way and then if you want to use that money then you can kind of like pop the money bag in the same way that you would pop these kind of bunch of runes that i was mentioning earlier and i wish that there was a way in here that you could buy like some sort of rune who knows how they would from soft it up like a rune case or some bullshit so that if i know i have 10,000 runes and i i'm not close to leveling up but there's i i don't want to die and possibly lose these let me buy a $10,000 rune case or whatever and that stays in my inventory and i can then uh you know adventure freely without the fear of losing those 10k because right now it's requiring me i believe like twenty nine thousand runes to level up and sometimes i'll have like 22k and i'm like shit this is like this is a lot of runes this is a lot of runes and i gotta be really careful about what the next play is uh luckily though i think dying in the open world is um not the worst case scenario because the the horse riding is super simple and super easy and fluid and being able to get on the horse and just run to the spot, pick up a rune, piece the fuck out. Like the amount of boss fights that are optional boss fights that I've been encountered with that I can just ride off away from have been great because in normal circumstances in a From Software game, you take the wrong corner, you turn the wrong corner and there's a big monster there waiting for you. There's nowhere to really go. Uh, because of its sort of linear nature. But in a lot of moments, I see a big boss. If it's like, ooh, I don't want to fuck with that right now, I just keep on writing, and it's all good. And I think the game does a great job with saying, whenever you're comfortable, come back here. Because mm. there's a big monster here that you might want to experience because it's really dope. And it's likely one you haven't seen before. I think that's one another impressive thing is the enemy mm. variety. Dude, the enemies are so dope. There are so many different enemies, and... To a certain point, you're you're gonna get some some clones where maybe this one shoots fire now instead of lightning, uh, but it's nothing egregious to the point where I'd say like, oh, they're just reusing bosses. Like, I've never felt that way about this game. I'm constantly seeing new things. Again, sixty three hours in, I'm still seeing new enemies that I've never seen before, and 
I open up my map and it is maybe 20% uncovered. It's it's fucking it, but it's exciting. Like I I'm so excited that I'm at that point that I still have so much I haven't seen yet. I got a bit spoiled with seeing a different biome on the Sony trailer today. So if you are planning on watching that, be careful because it it gives away it shows off some bosses, some main bosses that you may not want spoiled. But it also shows off a couple of biomes where I go, oh, shit, I didn't even know that was in this game. I've seen all sorts of different areas to be inside or, or to explore. But that is not an area that I've seen yet or even knew existed. I, I got I got to a biome uh, the other day where like it looked different from anything else I'd experienced in the game because I just kept going east uh, and I, <clears throat> I hadn't gone that far east before. And so I went, all of a sudden, the vibes are different, right? Like, oh, the, su- the, the sun shines different. a different color, basically. What? And, like, I I get there, I get to the grace thing. The I, sky I, is red. The sky is red, yeah. I sit, and it's, like, some weird-looking birds that are perched there. Where I'm Whoa, like, oh, what I'm moon rises. Yeah, I'm like, oh, dude, I don't know about, the, about these birds. And then I start to walk down a path, and I see, I'll just say, like, I see, like, an army of the undead. <laughs> and I'm like... That doesn't seem great. And I'm like, oh, I could probably take it. And I swing at one, the health barely goes down. I'm like, I'm not. I'm, I'm going back home. I'm not fucking around in this yeah. area. But and that's like, where the different you, biomes are so cool. And that's where you know, like, I am level gated. This I should not be here yet, but mm-hmm. I will come back here uh one day. And I do think the the thing that Tam was mentioning about sort of the 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 obtuseness of di- of directions and where to go, I have gotten just so much satisfaction out of listening to these NPCs just tell me where to go. And I I don't deserve a pat on the back for following basic directions, but I have just become so accustomed to just, oh, that quest log will just stay somewhere. And I've gotten to the point where I am marking stuff on my map, and I, um, not only can you mark down these pointers that Blessing was mentioning to kind of, you you would see when you're exploring, there's a big blue beam from the sky. That's where I marked. But you can also just, like many maps in many games, put down a... Uh, a little icon right, of right. a sword or a little icon of a, a mm. vendor shop or something. Um, it's constantly surprised me in that in ways where I'm interacting with this game in ways that I haven't interacted with a game before in a long time. Um, I, I just think it does so many great things right. I do think that it's no surprise to me that this game is really, really lacking on accessibility options. That's something I just kind of expected. I shouldn't write it off, but... It is what it is. It sucks. I wish that they would address that a bit more because um, it's it's definitely lacking I, in those departments. And in, it's, the, in that same discussion, I'm just, I am surprised, and I know this is new, and I, people are gonna fucking tear me apart. I already know, it, but I don't care. Uh, I am surprised this game doesn't let you pause. Like in, when we were talking about accessibility things, like that that is the thing that's always been present from software games. But again, this one being an open world game, I do think there are certain changes that are worth adapting, and especially for accessibility, I think that would have been a welcome addition because it sucks to be out in the open world and you're exploring for 30 minutes or whatever and it's like cool i gotta do a thing but in the, i'm in a game that at all times you could be in danger and i can't pause here so i gotta like you know go find the next site or grace site or whatever yeah thousand percent uh i do i i, I do want to answer the question of like the um from software like is it their best game and like obviously like i think for me, I still put Bloodborne and Sekiro above it, but I do think each of these games do something that is better than the other, where I think the best combat system for me is still Sekiro. Like I, 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 The way Sekiro plays in combat is so good. Bloodborne, I'm still most attracted to that world for the um, the lore and like the universe that they set up there with like all of the... Like the uh, Cosmic... Yeah, the the cosmic horror stuff and like the... I was trying to think of the name of the dude that like came up with Cthulhu. Lovecraft with Lovecraft. all the Lovecraftian elements of that game, like I think that stuff still shines so well, and like that combined with Miyazaki's brain, I think it's just so it's it's off the chain. Especially playing Elden Ring and coming across some scary elements in Elden Ring that maybe might be some of the most terrifying shit I've seen in a From Software game yet. Like um, that stuff is super dope. But then yeah, Elden Ring I would say has maybe some of the best enemy design on that front. Like coming across a, a boss or an enemy randomly in the open world with any new one. I'm always terrified to see what their deal is and like what their animation is like. Like there is an enemy that I fought recently where I, I hacked at them with my sword. All of a sudden they started freaking out. Like their body was doing like fucking crazy things, moving essentially like a mosquito would, right? Where it's like all over the place, like their body hops around and all that shit. And like that stuff is so impressive to see just in animation, let alone in just the visual design of the enemies. And 
like the the like Andy was saying, right? Like there's so much enemy variety, and even in like the the enemies that are the same, there's still things about them that like could surprise you. Like for me, there was a I was in a region that is hilly, and as I was I was running uphill, I saw a giant, and I've seen giants plenty of times in this game, and I've killed a lot of giants in this game, so I'm, I do not get scared of giants. But all of a sudden, because I'm on a hill, I see this giant ball up and then roll down the hill at me and i'd never seen that before oh and i, I was never like, seen oh, that. Shit. <laughs> yeah no like i'd never seen it before i was like what the fuck is happening right now and like he hits me and takes out a chunk of my health and i was like i didn't know you could do that um they and, adapted. Like, those are the moments that are excited yeah they <laughs> they're like there's a hill we're gonna fuck you up on this hill now and, and that's and that's one thing I, I love about the attention to detail that from soft pays to a lot of these areas is um they didn't just make an open world game for a quantity approach right like there, there's so many decisions in this game that are impactful in important ways and so many of these enemies that are placed there for certain reasons and they act certain ways because of where they are um you see that so many times on the on the bloodborne podcast that we talked about that i i sort of reshared recently because it's still one of my favorite things that we've done there's a there's a moment Tim, where you are in an area near the near the end of the game, and you notice that you fight one enemy, and that enemy is like the only one of its kind around this place. Everybody else in that area looks different, and you're like, "What?" And it doesn't really occur to you why that enemy is here, but they're here for some reason. So who knows? And then later on, as you keep on exploring, you end up getting to a place where you are above the area you just passed over in a way that. You look up like a normal person, you look up, there's nothing there, but you are kind of like ascended and hanging over the place where you just were. And this place is filled with all of that one rare enemy down there. And you're like, that person probably fell. That, that enemy like found a way to fall through this ceiling and is, was now in that first place. So like there are so many instances of that that are so well thought out and, wow. and like they just... They care about all of those moments. They want all those moments to have purpose. They're not just placing an enemy here to make it harder. Um, they're placing it there because it likely serves the story and the world in some some way. And it's really, really special shit. That's awesome. I'm sure we're going to talk about this game a lot more over the rest of the year. Andy, how much longer do you think you have in you until you beat it? Like, If you would have put a date on it, right now as of recording, it is February 22nd. When do you think you're going to beat this game. I'm at a point where I, I like, I kind of want to start a new playthrough. Um, to, to have like a fresh sort of like, like for stream and stuff like that. Do I continue this game? Do I, I on my Xbox, I've been playing with Mike for a bit and you could do four player co-op. Um, but obviously it's not cross play. So that sucks. That's another one of those like, of course they wouldn't have crossplay. Why would FromSoft even think of that? Um, if I were to continue this playthrough, I would say I'd have maybe another week or two. Of okay. I don't know how many days I'm playing, but like obviously what I've played so far is like overdrive. In the first three days, I had put in like 40 hours, and I was like, man, I am like... <laughs> one of the days, yeah, Tim, you were, I woke... You were like eating and sleeping Elden Ring for... One of the days... days. I had woken up at 4.30 in the morning. I couldn't fall back to sleep. So I was like, I'll play Elden Ring right now. It's 5 in the morning. And I'll take a nap. And I never took a nap. And I played from 5 in the morning until, like, I don't know, 8 at night. And I just kept on going. The and... one break you took was when the... I, I remember that day because you told me when your chair came. And you're like, oh, I should probably leave my room to, like, go set up this chair. And so we, like, took the chair out of the box. And you're like, yeah, I've been playing since 5 in the morning. And I was like, Andy, it's 3 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. yeah I mean, it, it, there's there's just so many moments of this game, Tim, that you you don't think that there's anything left to explore there. and then Or, or you think you might have hit uh, sort of a, a point where maybe the world is blocking you off from getting there but you end up finding a path to that place that you've been looking for forever and that begins an hour and a half to two hour journey yep. of and it's just there's I'm constantly <laughs> moments like that yeah there's yeah. constantly moments like that and um yeah I, I would say that there's still a lot of the map that i have yet to explore so i'd give myself maybe another like 20 hours yeah uh, to beat the game 
So if anyone's noticed Andy not being on other shows, it's because one of the snakes is actually named Eldon. Yes. So that, is, <laughs> that, is, that, is, that, is all, that is a whole last name <laughs> ring. Uh, we're about to do the post show where we're going to talk even more about Eldon ring, all the thoughts that blessing and Andy have so far, but for everyone else, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of the games cast. It has been many weeks of reviews. If you haven't caught up on all of them, please go back. We have a great seafood review. Oh, my mic just fell. Uh, great <laughs> seafood review. We have a great Horizon review, a great Dying Light review. And now this, um, I think, I think. Next week, I next think, week, is the first yeah. non-review episode of Gamescast we've had since January, I believe. I think. I don't I don't know if that's the case. <laughs> well, I yeah. mean, like, you know, like Stay a big main review. <laughs> It might okay. be. It might be. You know what? I actually am thinking right now. Like I'm looking I at think, the calendar right now, and yeah, I don't think, I think it is. Okay. I think well, it's. I looked at, I, I think when it's I looked at the calendar yesterday, that was not the case. But Things I, are yeah, changing yeah. left and right. It's going to be fun over here on YouTube.com/slash Kind of Funny Games. So stay tuned for a lot more of that. What a time to be a gamer! You know what I'm talking about? Man, I am so time? unhealthy right now. Oh, that <laughs> like the <laughs> Let us know in the comments below how excited you are for Elden Ring. What you thought about this? conversation and stay tuned for way more of these conversations and patreon.com slash kind of funny game supporters stay tuned for an amazing post show that we're about to do till next time love you all goodbye